Hey, my friend Sam here. So this clip is about torque with windless tourniquets. Um, I'm not going to be declaring a winner or not. This is just a science experiment that lets me get to use a, uh, a digital torque wrench, a caliper, and a digital manometer. So let's see what we learn. So that's not beautiful science, but I think it's safe to say that a wide band is a little bit like riding a bicycle in high gear. Uh, every time this cranks around, you're taking more material, it's getting thicker and thicker, and it takes more torque to crank it. But on the flip side, you're getting larger jumps in pressure. So that applies, I think, most to the Sam XT as well as the Fora. I have to say for the ETQ, probably my measurements here aren't great because it doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit very well inside of my... Uh, torque coupler, but I think it's consistent. A, a narrow band is like riding a bike in low gear. It'll be easier to make each twist. And the last thing that I find fascinating is comparing the cheap Amazon with the uh, the actual cat tourniquet. So the cheap Amazon tourniquet has a narrower band, and as you're turning it, it feels easier too. So that means you have to turn it more times. But I actually got pretty high pressures too. So I think the issue with the Amazon tourniquet that you find is, is actually more to do with quality. Um, you know, if it breaks, that's no good. And the siege was interesting too. So it has a shorter lever arm. The inner band is narrower, so you get more twists. It's less torque, uh, but you have less leverage. And, um, and you get some pretty comparable pressures. Again, I don't want to be saying this one is better than that one, but I think it's an interesting thing to see that the torque, the amount of force, times radius needed to get a jump in pressure uh, is very dependent on that, that inner band.